Good morning. How is everyone today? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Today's drawing prompt is things that go bump in the night. Good morning, Vix Diabolus. How is everyone today? Today's drawing prompt is things that go bump in the night. So I thought I would give a nod to Ed Emberley. Ed Emberley is a gentleman that um, did simple drawing books uh, using simple shapes back in the 60s and 70s, and I think even into the 80s, but we didn't use them in the 80s much. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thanks for joining. Thanks for coming on today. So I want you to draw along with me. I want you to grab yourself a sheet of notebook paper, or a, if you've got a tablet, come along and draw along with me, or if you've got a dry erase marker and a refrigerator door, you could do that too. <coughs> I'm glad you're doing good. It's a beautiful day in the world, isn't it? Can you hear the music okay? Yeah, I'll give it one tick up and see if that's if that's too loud. Go ahead and tell me I need to turn it back down. Good morning, Brian. Hello, hello, hello. So today I'm encouraging everyone to draw along with me. I'm going to step outside the box a little bit. Um, I design from beginning to end a sticker every day based on a drawing prompt that I get from simpledailydrawings.com. The link is in my bio. Um, there's also a link to uh, my store in there where you can purchase the stickers that we make. Um, and I encourage you to draw along with me. Today we're going to do. Uh, we're giving a nod to Ed Emberley. Um, Ed Emberley is a is a wonderful artist that simplifies things so that anyone can draw. So we're going to make a haunted house. We are going to make a haunted house out of things that go bump in the night. And I encourage you to draw along with me. So I am on my. I'm, I'm working in uh, Procreate. The app that I'm using is Procreate, and I'm on an iPad Pro. 11-inch uh, with an Apple Pencil. Um, and I'm working on a canvas that is 4,000 pixels wide by 5,500 pixels high. Um, the resolution is necessary for transferring over to Redbubble, which is the third-party vendor that I use for manufacturing and distributing my stickers and other items. Um, so these are the way that I lay out my layers. I'm going to pinch these together. This is just my reference material, so we can, I can... <clears throat> collapse the page a little better. Um, so these are the layers that I use in my drawings. We're going to start on the sketch layer today. And the brush that I'm using is in the sketching brush library. And it is a 6B pencil. I use it at 40%. Um, all the brushes that I use are default brushes. So I encourage you to draw along with me. And like I said, if you don't have a tablet to draw on, it doesn't matter what program you use. It doesn't really matter what you draw on. You can grab a piece of newspaper and, and draw with a magic marker. Or, you know, like I said, you can use a dry erase marker on a refrigerator door even and draw along with me. Uh, we're going to do a simplified haunted house today, but I'm going to make it um, a little more dimensional for you as well. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, let's start roughly in the center of your page. And I want you to draw a rectangle. And it doesn't need to be straight because this is a haunted house. So use your hand. All right. Now we're going to put a triangle on that. And once again, it doesn't have to be straight because it's a haunted house. Okay. Now we're going to draw a rectangle off to the left here. And then we're going to draw one up here a little bit smaller rectangle as well. Okay. So we've got three rectangles and a triangle so far. Now we're going to add another triangle here onto this. And then from here, we're going to draw a diagonal line to connect these two. All right. And we're going to do another what would be rectangle here. So just do a 90 degree angle. Oh. Just do a 90 degree angle and come straight down here. And then do a diagonal line, uh, do a straight line from the bottom here, I'm sorry. And come out as far as you want. You know, come out a little bit, come out a lot. 
and then do another diagonal line right there. Okay. Now we're going to go on to this side and we're going to do another rectangle all the way to the ground. This is tragic. Well, can you draw better than this? I bet you can. But I'm sure somebody taught you how to draw. I'm sure somebody showed you at one time how to draw. We're going to do another rectangle right here. And we're going to stop about, eh, just somewhere. Don't go all the way to the bottom. Anywhere that you want, just don't go all the way to the bottom. Okay, then I want you to draw another rectangle right here. <coughs> and then we're going to do another diagonal line to connect those. Now on this one here, we're going to put another triangle. But this time, we're going to take this line and we're going to bring it straight back like this. All right, so we've got a basic structure for a house now. Now let's, let's uh, get busy and we will make this the front porch. So we'll put the front door right here. So draw a rectangle to put in the door. And then from the top of the door, we're gonna draw a line all the way across the house. And then where you would put the doorknob, depending on how big you want this house to look, is where you're going to put the doorknob, because the doorknob is, is where people reach out comfortably and grab. So if you put the doorknob down at the bottom here, then the doorknob... Uh, let's make this a double door, too, to make it a little spookier. So just put a line down the center there. And then we can put arches in these windows. To make it a little spookier. And then put your doorknobs. And then a little square down here in each one of these doors. And once again, this is a haunted house, so they don't have to be straight. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, so about the bottom of the window, the, on the arches there, draw another straight line all the way across the house. Then we're going to roughly eyeball the center of that, and we're going to put a line just in the middle here. And then we'll do another one over about the middle of this one here. And then the center of this one here. And then the middle of this one, the middle of this one. And then you can put a line across the middle here. And once again, it's a haunted house, so they don't have to be straight. But there you've got a window with shutters now, okay? So we're going to go up here to the upstairs, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come down a little bit and put a line across it, and we're going to put another line across here. Then we're going to put a line in the center, roughly the center. It doesn't matter where you want it. And if you want more windows, you know, I mean, basically all it is is, is you put in your shutter, make it a little wider for your window, put in your shutter. Take a space for siding, put in your shutter, put in your window, put in your shutter. And then you can go back, shutter, window, make a line, shutter, siding, shutter, window, make a line, shutter, siding. And then you can put a line down the center as well. And you've got more spooky windows. <laughs> All right. Now, this would be an attic space, so we can put an arched window or we can put a round window. You can draw a circle, you can draw a square, you can draw a diamond, you can put a heart there. It doesn't matter what shape that you want. Um, it's, be, it's spooky, so I'm going to go with a, a round one. And because it's a haunted house, oh, I changed my color on myself accidentally. You can have your window go in any direction that you want. 
And then over here on this one, we can make this one arched. And we'll make this one look like a tower. Now the way that you make it look like a tower is you can draw a line straight across here. And just draw a couple of them and do it kind of like you would a candy cane. But once again, well, let's not say candy cane. How about we say Beetlejuice's uh, socks? How's that? The snake from Beetlejuice. Just draw some lines there. Okay, so we've got a window right here that runs down the middle. So on this level, we're going to put the window in the middle. So we'll take... Oh, I did it again. I changed my color on myself. So we'll put a line in the middle. Make a rectangle here. That's one window there. And we'll put another window over here next to that one. And then we'll do another one up here next to this one. And that makes it look kind of round, like it's got a spiral staircase in it. Haunted houses are very dynamic. Yes, they are. And I encourage you to draw along with me. We're using simple shapes today. We're using, uh, uh, I'm basing my lesson today on the Ed Emberley way. Um, and I want you to draw a haunted house with me. So we're going to put some windows in here. Now this is a two-story, so what I think we're going to do is we're going to make this the side of the building. And then we'll put a... Let's do this here. Let's put another shuttered window up here. What do you think? And the way we do that is, once again, you do siding, shutter, window, shutter, siding. And then your window, you just put an X or a cross in the middle of it. And you got your window. And you come back over here and do the same thing on this level. Siding, shutter. I'm on a racer. Siding, shutter, window, shutter, siding. Cross. And then... We can put another door over here. With another spooky little window. And then we can put another little window here. And we can put bars on this one. And we can put bars on this one. Make it more like a dungeon. And then we'll just throw some little windows on here that are arched too. And then we can throw another little window. Like I said, you can make them any shape you want. You can make them a diamond, you can make them a square. And you can run the, <coughs> the styles any way you want. We can put bars on this too. And then now we can go back and embellish. We can put on a front porch. Let's put on our front porch posts. So we'll put a post on this side. And then we'll put a post right here in the middle. And then we'll draw another line right here and a line right here. And then we can draw a line right here and a line right here. And we can make this wrought iron. We can take it and just put some lines, but make sure they go just a little bit above your top line. So you can start even at the bottom and then just go a little bit above the top. And like I said, once again, this is a haunted house, so they don't have to be straight. They can be, you know, you can bend them any way you want. This is a haunted house. It's, it's been through the ringer once or seven times in its existence. And then we can add some spooky little gingerbread stuff just by using W, 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 all the way down the top here. So you can see there are several ways that you can do this. So I'm going to get on to um, the coloring and the outline phase. Um, and that's where I'll show you a little more of this snow. Yeah, the smoke is is definitely in the air today. It's supposed to be clear for the next handful of days too, but the sun rises, oh my word. 
Wow. Give me a moment. Holy moly, that's gorgeous. Wow. Beautiful sunrise this morning. If you guys have an opportunity to look at it. Okay. All right, now I'm going to get to my sticker phase. I like to turn everything into a sticker, and this is a rough outline of what we're going to do with the haunted house. Um, and I, I hope you're drawing along with me. hope you're drawing along with me. So I'm going to go to my sticker layer. Uh, I use my calligraphy brush uh, the mo uh, in the calligraphy brush library mono line at 100%. Uh, I'm working on an iPad Pro 11-inch with an Apple Pencil. Uh, my canvas is 4,000 pixels wide by 5,500 pixels high. And once again, I'm working in Procreate. Um, and I'm going to use the color white. And I am just going to do a really quick, rough outline of this because I am an ADHD artist and I want to see my stuff in a mock-up. So I mock up a sticker. I'm going to fill this real quick. And then I want to do a drop shadow. So I swipe left, duplicate that layer. I'll turn off the upper one for the demonstration. Select that lower layer. Switch to the color black. And fill that in. What's going on here? What's going on here? I got some lines up higher somewhere. Okay. Oh, that was on my sketch layer? No, I'm on my sticker layer. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, um, Gaussian Blur is under your magic wand. Go down and do Gaussian Blur on the whole layer. Bring it up to somewhere between 19 and 21%. And my indicator is right here. It says 19.4. Then I'm going to go back and turn on the upper layer. Select the lower layer and do a drop shadow with it. I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to take that sketch layer that I did of the house and I'm going to go back and modify it. Now, the, now if you've drawn on paper, the way that you can redraw the same way that I'm doing just by adding another layer, you can put two pieces of paper together, one on top of the other, and then put it against a piece of glass, like up against a window or a door. And then you can use it as a light table and trace the same way that I'm doing. And what it'll do is it'll come through like this. So this will look like you've got your, your one piece of paper over the other so that you can re redo your outline and clean it up and make things look a little different. Now, this is just my rough idea of what I'm going to do. So I can stylize from here now. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and get a little fancy with my hand. I am going to switch to my inking. Uh, I'm going to use the studio pen. Still love my syrup for my fills, gang, but I'm going to use the studio pen just so, so you guys understand that I, 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 I can do it. I can do it. I can, I can be like everybody else. So I'm just going to get started with my outline. I normally start with the nose if I'm drawing people. And I'm going to keep this pretty loose. I want it to look more sketchy. Um more haunted housey. I'll have a little more fun with it. My pencil tip is... Okay, I think I'm at the point where I need to replace my nib. Because my line isn't... My pressure isn't working properly on it. Yeah, it's not getting wide enough. <laughs> so look at this. This is just a bunch of U's side by side to make this pattern and it on old victorian homes i live in an area where they've got some old homes from the 1800s that have this stuff on it and uh in the architectural world we call it gingerbreading when people put this stuff on their homes it's a it's a really really good look if you've got the right home you know some of this stuff doesn't look so good on say a ranch style house but when you get these old homes that go up in the air a little bit.
Can you guys hear the music? Can you hear the music? Doc Ock, how are you? Are you guys drawing along with me? I hope so. If not, you're missing out. It's a great time to draw. And these are just the equal sign. And once again, it's a haunted house, so they don't have to be straight. Or if you turn your paper on its side, you're just making a bunch of number 11s. Like I said, once again, it's a haunted house, so if you've got a crooked line, it's okay. Just let your hand flow. I'm working on a sketchily style today. Sketchily. That's, that's, that's another one of those words I made up for this program. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Make a little change on this one. I'm going to do this instead so that I've got room to that because I put this post in. You'll draw with me after you drop your daughter off? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> did what I just did was so that I could go back and do this instead by golly stumped myself twice in a row drawing squirrels think blink drink and ink once again in the shutters just a bunch of number 11s going in different directions and if you put the space in like you would if you were doing 11, 11, 11, 11, not 1,111, but if you were doing 11, 11, you get this neat effect with shutters. Like I've said time and again, anyone can draw. And if you're following along and you're doing what I'm doing, you're, you're drawing. You are drawing. Once again, it's a hot and house, so it can be rickety and crickety and crooked. <coughs> These things take time. These things take practice. So I'm going to make this a little fancier. I'm going to throw some soffit on here and fascia. So the sketch is just a basic outline of what you want to do, and then you just go back in and toss the details on. And once again, if you trust the process, you just say, okay, I'm going to use W's and U's for the majority of it. Then your stuff is going to come out pretty slick. You stay with those shapes. And you can use X's, and Z's are a good uh, letter for... Uh, decorating uh, sixes for doing um, if you're going to do scrolly wrought iron you use sixes and eights and letter S's everybody knows how to draw you just need to remember or you just need to realize that there's really not a whole lot to it when you um, I mean if you know how to write your name you can draw I bet there's letters in your name that you can you can turn into stuff. Like the letter K, you put a, a ball on top of it and it's somebody kicking with their arm up or running or 
you know, and then the letter X could be somebody running or doing jumping jacks or, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many things you can do with letters like that. That's just an upside down U right there with a line across the bottom. These are L's and sevens. And once again, it's a haunted house. So if your spacing isn't quite right, I've been practicing for 40 years and my spacing isn't quite right. So if you're new to this and you're just out, out of the box, and again, it's a haunted house. It can be rickety and crickety. I'm just doing the use again. Putting a little spunk on them, giving them the bit of the flow of the roof a little bit, not much. I hope you're drawing along with me. And if not, I hope you're taking notes so that you can draw later. And then we're going to put some little blocks underneath here to symbolize that this is um, like on a tower. See how simple that was? Just bring this line all the way down to the bottom. And then we'll come across the bottom here and we'll put stone at the bottom of this. And the way you make stone is just a bunch of funny shaped letter O's. Once again, this is a haunted house, so they don't have to be any shape at all. You can make them wobbly, like jelly beans or kidney beans or um, what are those things? Minions? Just lopsided deflated circles. And now you've got stone across the bottom. And then this is going to be a tower, so we want to put our big... But this one is just going up to the library or the observation deck. How's that? So this one. But if you put the windows, like I said, if you put one window on the on the bottom, one in the middle, and then one up on this side, it gives the illusion of having a spiral staircase. It looks rounder. Even though it's perfectly flat, there's no shading on it at all. Jumping beans. Yes, that's it. Can't draw until the baby's down for a nap. Good morning, Ethan Clark. Hey, I encourage you to draw along with me. My name's Rick Seeley. I'm here Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'm going to get back over to the porch here. And I'm going to do this post a little fancy. Put a box on it. So I'm gonna go back and erase myself. Then I want this to look slatted as well, so I'm gonna do some bigger 11s. 11, 11, 11, 11. Just little tiny details. And like I was saying, up here in the corners, uh, you can put in the letter S. Just do a fancy letter S. And then you've got scrolls on your posts. 
So we'll do that over here as well. A little spooky detail. On the Apple Pencil too, when you double tap, uh, you can get it set up in Procreate anyway. You can set it up to where when you double tap, it goes back and forth from the brush to the eraser. And although it's sometimes annoying, it, it comes in much more handy than when it flubs me up. I tap my pencil when I'm working. Even just doing what I do when I do this, when I pull my hand together, sometimes it'll register that as two taps because my hand bumps it twice. We'll put this wrought iron back in here. Let's put two bars at the top. Gives it a little more weight. And once again, just draw your lines a little bit above and you can go a little bit below and do it like train tracks. You're just drawing train tracks or a ladder. And once again, it's a haunted house, so they don't need to be straight. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is your adventure. This is your journey. You don't have to copy me exactly either. You can do your own thing. Like say you wanted this to be a heart shape or a star or a, a jumping bean shape. Good morning, Savage. Good morning, Anime. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Doc Ock. Good morning, good morning, Ethan. Good morning, Le Leslo. Good morning, Sarah J. Fisher. Good morning, Oz. Good morning, Gemini. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Sketchy18. Good morning, Bohemian Moon. All right, I've said hello to everybody that I've said hello to. If you're new here... Um, go ahead and say hi. Savage, are you drawing this morning? If not, why not? I don't want your excuses. You know how to write, you can draw. Especially with what we're doing today. We are simplified. I am using the Ed Emberley method where he teaches one piece, one shape at a time. But I'm bringing in a little more of my own spunk as far as U's and L's and I's and, you know, simple shapes, just squares and... And we're doing a haunted house because those definitely go bump in the night. And once again, I'm doing my 11s, my crooked 11s, 11, 11, 11, which add just a subtle little detail to the door. Very little detail to the door. But it adds a little bit more spooky to it. A little bit more spooky. <laughs> Took a long time to get that laugh. That spooky haunted laugh. Gotta take your voice way down to do that though and get to the grovel. Good morning, tattooed guy. How are you? Good morning, G Taylor. Henry's having coffee. All right. Well, you're drawing. You're always drawing though. Have you, Henry? I haven't seen much drawing out of you lately. I've been really busy and I apologize if I haven't gotten all your Instagram stuff. Oh, forgive me. There's a bunch of you that are... I think I got caught up yesterday on everybody that I needed to get with. So if you want to hit me up again. and um, I will have uh, all of the stickers from this previous week will be available. Uh, will be up on the Red Bubble today as well. And then to make a doorknob even spookier, you can do, um, you can put a rectangle below it, and that just makes it look more 
cathedrally. It gives it a little more flair. Okay, so let's throw in our S's. <laughs> and if, it, if this backwards S is, is a little difficult for you, you can just do figure eights too. Figure eights look pretty good up there also. And then if you want, you can even do more little scrolly stuff just by um, doing the uh, candy ribbon look where you just do left and right little squiggles all the way across. Don't even pick your pencil up. Just do little squiggles. Pretty neat, huh? Let's put a skinny little window in here. And then over here, we'll make this a tower. And this is a simple way to signify bricks. You can do a bunch of number ones, then go turn them into HHH all the way down. And then at the top of the H's, just draw your line together. And that can symbolize brick. And then if you want, you can come up here and then offset it again. So you've got your H and draw H and then the letter H and then between the H's, just connect them together. And you've got bricks. And then you can throw a couple little rectangles together out in the middle as well to signify bricks. That's what we'll do on this one over here. I'll show you a couple different ways to signify bricks. So simply you just draw a rectangle Put a line in the center of it, draw another rectangle, draw another rectangle, and then throw one more rectangle off to the side like that, and that's enough to symbolize bricks <coughs> on the whole thing. So then up here, we can come and do the H trick again. So you've got your H, H. So like that, like that. And then you might throw just one more on top for visuals. But then you can come back up here and do the same trick with the bricks, but have them touch the window too. I'm gonna need a couple more over here. Letter H, continue. Pretty simple. And then if you wanna add a windowsill, just put a bigger rectangle underneath your window, or you can just put a line across your window like that. Either one is fine. And maybe they started with this and then they had an epiphany and they said, okay, we're going to do one like that. And so the other windows are going to be like this. And then you can add corbels underneath just by turning it into a bench. Or you could do corbels with just making like the letter T also. The corbel is the little crux that holds things up underneath the window. Like on a flower box, the little triangle thing. All right, let's move on to this section of the house. And I think we're gonna throw in this tower first. 
because we're in a bricky mode. Put bars on these, like I said. Very simple shapes. And when you string them all together, right here, L's and sevens again, or an X or a cross or L's and sevens. And this one I'm going to put a normal roof on, I think. Now I'm going to have this roof attached to this roof here. Because it should go all the way through the house. And then this one, this line comes back. And then this line comes back. And then on this one, that would be a uh, fascia board, which is the, um, how do I have that line? What did I, what was I doing there? What is that line about? Take that one out. I think what was I thinking? Even when I draw with a, a pencil or pen and ink, I spin my paper. There's some people that um, use drafting dots and they'll hold their, their paper flat and work at a straight 90 degrees all the time. And I'm, I don't care to do that myself. That's just me. So there's really no right or wrong way to draw. Just expressing yourself. And if you trust the process, like right now, I'm zoomed in so far, I can't see what this looks like compared to the other stuff, but I'm trusting that by sticking with the process of the L's and 7's and squares and 11's, that the consistency will show. <laughs> yes, Kevin, I think this will look saff. I appreciate you. Oh, I'm about to be straight. You do? You love this song? Well, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if this one's going to turn out. 
SAF, but it'll be good. What time are we at? I don't have a watch on me today and my power went out. Somebody tell me what time it is, please. Nine twenty. Okay, thank you. Right. Do you guys recognize this song? Climb every mountain from the sound of music. Can you hear the song? I don't think we would put slats in a big old metal door, would we? When the head bars on it. This would be more like this. Once again, U's and I's and L's and 7's and squares and triangles and just stringing it all together and trusting the process. And if you were here from the beginning, you should be looking pretty good right now. All right, I'm going to turn off my sketch layer now that I've got most of my gear together. I did not finish this little piece here, which is going to be the front lawn area up to the porch. And we can make that a graveyard even if we want. <laughs> corrugated tin over here and that's just a bunch of straight lines that don't have to be very straight but they're just pretty close together this house was built over time they used what they had lying around I was fortunate enough to be involved in a project golly 15 almost 20 years ago we did a a house for um, some movie producers out of New York that were building this little ski chalet up here. But they had a story around it. And they, it was very eclectic in the sense that um, I'm going to do shiplap siding here. Uh, it was a very eclectic piece where they wanted it to look like um, it was an old craftsman that had just collected bits and pieces from old job sites over the years and built his dream home out of that. So it was really cool because there was a you know, like a section at the master or at the um, the main bedroom area uh, looked like it was made out of metal. And then there was other sections that were like old clapboard. And then some of them had, um, you know, we had brown windows and we had green windows and we had wooden windows and we had metal windows. And, and you know, one garage door looked different than the other. It was It was kind of a Partridge family bus looking thing when it started out, but 
I mean, just looking at the architectural drawings and, and the amount of work that went into that thing was, it was pretty spectacular when it was done. It won, um, it won some awards, some architectural awards, at least for the area. Um, for Mountain Chic, it, it uh, won pretty well. It did pretty well in the Parade of Homes. Once again, it's a haunted house, so your hand doesn't need to be straight. And like I said, I've been doing this for 40 plus years. Now, granted, I've had, I had a major, major injury not long ago that I'm still coming together from. Now, let's make these, no, I'm not gonna do that. These are wooden. So, that being said, these should have frames on them because wood needs to have trim so that the siding has something to butt to. So we need to frame out these windows. I'm gonna stay architecturally accurate with the piece. <laughs> hmm. Makes your anxiety and impatience go crazy. I remind you of Bob Ross. Thank you. That's. That's that's an amazing compliment. I really really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, the Winchester man. Yeah. Yeah, I am going to put a graveyard down in front of the. Uh, I am going to put a graveyard in front of the house here, and I did I did uh, turn the music up, Patty. Thank you. Do I need one more notch, or can you guys hear it okay now? Am I gonna color it in? Are the yes. But I'm gonna do something loose with it. I'm not gonna go crazy on the color. I'm gonna do uh you'll see. It's gonna be monochromatic. And it's gonna have um just some character to it. It's gonna be really simplified. Once again, I am going to trust the process as much as I encourage you to. to be I'm going to gingerbread them rather than zigzag because I don't have much zigzagging on the rest of the house <laughs> while we're sitting here and I'm just doodling Let's talk about this Tech Free 15 so that you guys don't have to hear me say it again later because some of you are probably getting sick of me doing it. So I'm going to do my grass along the bottom here. I'm going to do it Charlie Brown style. Um, Charles M. Schultz basically just went in and did scribbles, little explosions, little bumps and hops. Ta-da. I am having a great morning. Vermilion in VR, huh? 
I haven't done much with the VR stuff in some time. Put in the front stoop. So this, I can go back and erase the grass here. Make this one straight so that I can have some grass on this side still. Put the lines for the pavement in. There we go. We gotta throw in a headstone or two. I should put the headstones on another layer. I'm gonna put the headstones on outline too so that I can work on them. So we can put a keystone on this. <coughs> so just a keystone, which is a stylized square, and then an L and a 7, and then do another L and another 7. And there you go. And then this will be brick. So we'll do our H's. H space, H space, H space and then i so h h h i and then at the tops of the h's you just connect them and you got bricks and you can just continue to do that all the way down now on this side we can run our h's all the way up And then we can just throw a couple here to indicate that it runs up the side of the door as well. We'll put a tin roof on this one. Same on this one. When we draw, we pull from our arm, our elbow, our shoulder, our wrist. You can see that my hand is very stiff right now. My fingers aren't even moving, my hand is. I'm drawing from my shoulder right now. I'm actually pulling with my shoulder. And then you want to continue this roof. And we can do the same thing down here. And I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Get some color on this thing. Good morning, Selena Granado 377 from Texas. Thank you for the good morning. I appreciate it. If you were talking to me. <laughs> 
I don't mean to interrupt if you guys are carrying a conversation. I'm not paying much attention to the comments today. Um, I found that my flow went a lot better yesterday. Front door needs a trim. Needs some trim. All right. I think we're in pretty good shape. I'll think, I'll think, I'll think. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my outline one and erase behind my headstones. I like it. I do need to thicken up some of the outlines. Let me do that real quick. Switch over to my syrup brush, which is my favorite brush. I'm going to combine these two outlines because they look good to me. I'm going to add another outline layer. I'm going to rename it. I think I need a new nib. I'll have to swap that out. Just not responding exactly how I like it to. Maybe it's the whole tablet. Not the pen. I did empty my cash though. But this thing's pretty full. I've been drawing a lot lately. And I haven't offloaded to my desktop a bunch of the stuff that I've been working on. So I've got. Hmm. I don't know what to do with this here. I think I'll just do this.
pretty good. Right now I'm just playing with line weight to visually carry the piece and give it a little more depth. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm doing it. It's the way I roll. Thank you for the likes. Appreciate you. If you're new here and you haven't, you're not following me, um, go ahead and say hi. We're a really good group of people on here. I pride myself on trying to have a good vibe in here where we all stay positive and we're uplifting to one another and we support each other in our work and our efforts and in life as well as on TikTok. There's some really, really good people I've met since we started doing this just a little under three months ago. The 11th will be our three month anniversary and I think some of you have been here since day one if not day one you sure got on early Hendrix has been here since the very beginning Gemini I think you've been around Oz, Wags Ryan Ms. Patty of course Is Nancy on, that Colorado girl? She's been on since the beginning of time, too. Vey. I think this looks fun. I like it, I like it a lot. All right, now I'm gonna go and switch my palette. Um, uh, I really wanted to use oranges, but I think we'll go with this. We'll use purples today. Go to my color three. And I am going to work with transparencies today. I'm going to take my whole layer down to 30%. And I'm going to use... A mid-tone purple. And then just start knocking down color. Give it a more painterly look today. My nib is...
When you're working in Procreate 2, if you're using a brush like Syrup or something that's got a taper on it, um, if you go back and forth with your line, your, your taper will be a little different. So pull it that way or pull it that way. You can see that it's fatter, thicker or thinner on one end. So instead of having a bunch of stuff going in the same direction, you can go back and forth like that. And it gives a little more depth that it um, can uh, help fool the viewer's eye into seeing shading where shading doesn't exist. I'm going to turn on my reference. These two together. So what reference does is it basically takes your outline and turns it into a coloring book. Let me get back on my correct layer. I was fortunate enough um, several years ago to get to do the architectural drawings for uh, subdivision, but they were the, the real estate illustrations. So I would do the exterior of the home and then, you know, put on all the, the siding and make the cedar shake look like cedar and make the corrugated tin look like corrugated tin. But I did it all with... Uh, Pantone markers, so we didn't have Photoshop or any of that stuff yet. I'm using soft, very, very subtle colors on this for my base layer. I don't know that I need to go much further. I kind of like the way that it's looking today. 
just being this simple. What do you guys think? Is this worth the price of admission so far? <laughs> I hope you're spending your time with me as enjoyable. That I could probably just have done a fill with. That one would have worked. All this other stuff I'd have... Good after morning. You're moving over to virtual drawing instead of paper? Coconut, you should upload your work. Show your work. Get yourself a DeviantArt. Get yourself an Instagram. Get yourself a YouTube channel. Get yourself a Redbubble storefront. Or a Gumroad. Or, or one of those. A third party. Uh, make sure that their products are the same. Because I've heard some stuff about a couple of the places that are doing... Um, 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 um t-shirts and whatnot where they're going to other outside vendors that aren't uh, producing the same quality every time. So what you get is kind of hit and miss, it seems, for some people, which could be frustrating, I would imagine. Yeah, we encourage everyone to show your work. Um, and I do have a critique and uh, contact tab in my bio. If you want to share some of your work with me, you can send it to me via email or you can tag me on Instagram. Um, yeah, I'm happy to take a peek at it. I, I love to see other people's work.
a little bit of orange somewhere else over this way. I don't want to do that there because I've got a funk on that. All right. I'm going to go back over to my trash pumpkin. Let's see what this does. It doesn't help on that layer. Let me go up to color. <laughs> what are the odds? Spooky stuff, huh? Coconut Kev, yes, we do want to see it. Indeed, post it somewhere. Show us, yes. Thanks, Wags. 12 and a half pages to rough out in a coloring book commission I'm doing, and then 29 pages of line work. I think this looks pretty sharp. Okay. Now, I want to do my outline. I want to make my sticker look more like a sticker. So, I am going to clear my... I'm going to delete my drop shadow. I'm going to clear my sticker layer. Now I'm going to do something new and exciting, gang. You guys paying attention? I'm going to duplicate my outline layer. I'm going to take said the lower layer, turn off the upper layer. I'm going to turn on the lower layer. I'm going to go over to Gaussian Blur. I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to Gaussian Blur the entire layer until it's the size that I want. Let me turn this one back on so I can see what I'm doing. Um, do, 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 do. Let me do this again. Forgive me. Make sure I've got this outline turned on. Gaussian blur on the entire layer until I get the outline that I want. Now, I go into my selection tool. My automatic selection tool, not freeform. What happened there? I'm filling instead of selecting. What's going on? Why is it? Oh, my color fill. Sorry. What is going on here? All right, maybe I'm not going to show you something fancy. It's not working. It is not working. Let me... No, I'm on the right layer. What's going on? What is happening? I should be able to select it automatically. Why is it doing that? Why is my threshold off? Hmm. 
Hmm. There we go. So you just use your selection tool till you get your outline where you think you want it. And you let it go. Then you hit color fill. That fills it in with whatever color you have here indicated. Now, with my selection, I'm going to invert it. And then three finger swipe, cut. I did that wrong. <laughs> okay, invert. Um, and then have this selected. Why won't it go away? Son of a gun. Son of a gun. to work on this but I can't figure out how to get rid of that but there is I, I know a trick by golly I know a good trick it does work it does work I just haven't done it in a while I think that worked fashion way with our calligraphy pen. I will have that figured out and I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you tomorrow. You guys will you guys will be pleased with that stunt. My iPad isn't working right. But I'm sure that one is all user error. I'm sure that one was all user error. Yeah, and Bird is a beautiful tool, isn't it? All right. We're about done here. I may go in and, uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll go in and throw some shading really, really quickly. I don't know. I kind of like the way that it looks, though. I like that it's just simple. Doesn't look very haunted, but it's got a graveyard in the front yard, so. Yeah. Don't know too many houses that can say that. Well, not ones that are marked anyway. <laughs> Someone's gonna rewrite that with a laugh face, I, I guarantee. That's good enough. Government. Government cheese. What layer am I on? Thank goodness I was on a different layer. What happened there? camera sorry gang said so between 19 and 21 18.9 isn't going to do it for me
All right. What do you think, gang? Yeah, the opacity on the color layer, I have set it, um, I think I put it at 30. Yeah, I've got it at 30% opacity. Did you guys draw along with me? What did yours look like? Send them to me. I'd love to see them. All right. Let's say we play a little ditty. Play a little ditty that we all know and love. If I can find it. And do a time lapse. See if I've got one today. Little ditty about Jack and Diane. Two American kids growing up in the heartland. ABCs of multi fandom. Hello. Have to say I'll say it anyway. A VR paintbrush controller would be really cool. Hey, Daniel Lou 86. Thank you. Thank you. Hop on TikTok just to get Rick rolled. <laughs> This is Take On Me by AHA. Yes, sir. My favorite song. Hmm. Rick rolled. This is not Rick Ashley. This is Rick Seeley. Yes, please tag me in any of your videos. Absolutely, anyone. I would love to see your work. There's only there's only a little over 23,000 of you. I think I can keep track. Gang, I want to thank you for joining me today. Make sure you take your Tech Free 15. Make sure you take time to smile. Choose to be happy. Let's load. Get your stuff together. Yes. Yes. This is so simple. Hey, I'll show you my, I'll show you my setup sometime. Or I'll show you the setup that I started with. Basically, it was uh, two dowels and some soup cans. And I just ran. I just set the two dowels on top of my soup cans. 
and laid my phone flat on top of it and kept the soup cans piled up and tried not to bump it while it was overhead. Now I've got a little better setup. Eighteen, just tag me in whatever, buddy. Sketches, drawings, eighteen. Yeah. Hey, you guys, I hope I put a little bit of a smile on your face this morning, get you started off on the right step. I really appreciate you folks coming on. You know, it's people like you that make people like me like people like you at times like this, and don't you forget it. Uh, David, so good to see you. Welcome, 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 Mr. lopez -y. What are you laughing at Wags for? What are you guys talking about? Oh, the new Rick Roll. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Before we go, we got to figure out what are we doing tomorrow? What are we doing tomorrow? What's our, what's our drawing prompt for tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow? Sinking. Sinking is our drawing prompt for tomorrow. I'm going to go through the time lapse one more time. Let you kids say your goodbyes. Did I watch What If? I haven't seen this week's What If. I haven't seen it in a couple weeks. I thought it was over at at episode seven because they took a week off. I didn't. I the one with Thor was the last one that I saw. When Thor and uh, Captain Marvel got into a tiff. That's the last one that I've seen. But I do have the other two on my list. I'm, I'm drawing right now. I'm trying to get this project done. I'm overworked and overtired. And, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Gosh, this project that I'm working on is just so stinking amazing. I'll, I'm, hopefully, I'll be able to show it to you guys here shortly. I'll be able to share it. But it's a pretty big deal. Have a good time zone, everyone. That's fantastic. Yeah. Bye, all. Bye, all. Thank you so much. Once again, tomorrow is sinking. Sinking. All right. So we can draw the Titanic. Uh, we can draw feelings. We can draw kids bobbing for apples. We can draw... I don't think you can bob for apples anymore, can you? I don't think you can do vodka luges anymore either. I don't know. You kids have a great day. Thanks for coming on. When the camera starts shaking, it's time to go home. Not a single Q&A today, huh? Very good. All right. Thank you, Patty, for moderating with passion. Appreciate you. Quicksand. Perfect. Yes. 